here in southern Ohio, which is Amish country, it's not unusual for us to see horse and buggies sharing the road with cars. They're prevalent all over the place, and it's it's actually a blessing to see their slow-paced lifestyle. Many of the car, horse and buggies, I do want to let you know, do have blinkers on them now for safety purposes. So that was a new addition that Ohio added within the last couple of years, and it's really nice to see that because it is a nice feature. There are other states where Amish live, and I've got a, a map here just to kind of show you how widespread they are across the country, and I'm sure there's some states that these numbers have in, increased. Many times Amish families will kind of break apart or the communities and go to another state just for the sake of their children being able to marry other Amish families so they can have more choices in who they who they want to marry. What I want to do today is just go over a typical day of an Amish family. Now, with I do have a disclaimer. Not all Amish families are farmers. They are all different. Not all of them spend their day exactly the same, but this is a typical day. After that, I also want to cover why do Amish people want to live such a slow-paced life without the modern conveniences. What is the reason for that? And so we'll go over that a little bit as well. <coughs> Typical day for an Amish family revolves around a simple and self-sustaining lifestyle that's focused on their faith, family, and community. Now with that, each family obviously has different chores to do, different um, jobs that they they participate in um but everybody will get up before the sun rises they're very early risers they're very hard workers and every morning they will start with prayer and devotion and sometimes while mom's making the breakfast in the kitchen uh, some of the kids and dad will go out and do some of the chores some of the early morning chores would be tending to animals milking cows feeding livestock and any other tasks that are related to maintaining the family farm or household. Now, not all Amish live on great big farms with lots of acreage. When you see that, those are typically farmers who are producing vegetables and livestock so that they can sell. So that is their way of life. At other families where the dad might have woodworking to do or... Uh, they might go out and work for construction and leave the house during the day. They will typically tend to the family farm or mom will go out and do it later. But typically everybody has their produce, everybody has their farm, but it's a different size. Breakfast might happen about eight o'clock. It's usually after everybody's got those morning chores done and it will consist of eggs, homemade bread, cheese, and fruit. They always have canned fruit available. So they're definitely going to share that at each of their meals. Now, typically about 8.30, a lot of the adults may continue with their farm work or any other family businesses. Like I said, dad might leave and go to do his chore. Um, kids will, at this time, be ready to go to school. They do have Amish schools. I've got a link above to explain some of that. They only go till eighth grade, and they usually start by about six years old. It's not unusual to see children going to school. They could be riding scooters. They might be walking, or you could see them with a little cart and a pony. It really just depends on which community that they live in and how far away they live from the school. I even know some families that will rent the English to come pick up their children, maybe in a van, and drop them off and pick them up. It just, again, depends on the distance and what road they live on. Everybody gets back together at lunch, That whoever is still at home. Um, children will eat their lunch at school and schools t around 2 33 o'clock you can if you're driving around you might see some of the kids coming home from school and again it just depends on which community that they reside in of course kids will have time to play they can do crafts they'll sew or they help with the chores and a lot of times an Amish child helping with chores is just helping to be part of the family like any young children they love to help and that's just their way of life other things, you may go past a family, an Amish family home, and you may see a swing set out in the yard. So the kids do get to go outside. They get to throw a bat, you know, a ball around, hit the bat, hit it with a the bat. They have swing sets, play sets. So just like any children, they just don't have the video games and those devices to entertain them with. Supper is typically four to five, and Again, the meal may be meat, vegetables, homemade bread, and desserts. 
We have met a couple families that work on their own property and they are very, very good, the men, about stopping their work and going in and eating with the family. They take that very seriously. Now, again, some men are leaving the premises to go do work and then coming home later. But if they're around, they definitely spend that time with their family and have a family meal. It's very, very important. When evening comes, they have devotions together. The dad might read from the Bible and, and they pray before bedtime. It's, it's, again, a very important part of their lifestyle. It's a very important part of their day. Day ends uh, typically 8.30 to 9. I'm sure um, sometimes the kids might go to bed earlier if it gets dark. A lot of the homes do not have electricity. Um, they, they usually use the solar panels for practical things, like maybe charging batteries and things like that. Again, it depends on what community they live in. Some of them will use powered uh, battery-powered lights in the home and still have that light during the day, or they will use a headlamp to get around in the dark instead of using lights. So why do the Amish choose to live this way? Why don't they just take advantage of all the conveniences? I mean, our lives, if you think about it from the 1800s as English people, has morphed. Um, there used to be horse and buggies, and then we started driving cars. So the English have pretty much taken on all of these conveniences and made them part of their life. Why did the Amish not jump on board and why did they still stay in that time frame, if you will? In the Bible, God tells us in his word to be in the world, but not of the world. And that's really hard to understand if you've never heard that or really never dug in to understand it. Um, I used to think that people would um, maybe disassociate themselves from others and not be part of the world, but that's not really what it means. You still live in the world and you live your life, but do not conform to the pattern of the world. After all, who is ruler over the world right now? If you read your Bible and you understand the beginning of time when Eve ate from the, the tree that she shouldn't have, God gave Satan dominion over the world and he's coming back to take that back. He wants us to, with our free will, choose whether or not we want to follow him and his word or not. And here, here's a good verse. I've got it up on the board here. It's Romans 12, 1, 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Here's another one. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. I thought this one was really profound um, because we are living in a world where we crave possessions and pleasure. And it is what God doesn't want. He wants us to live here and, and live a good life and be happy, but pay attention to what you put first. Are you putting the will of God first or are you putting the things of the world first? And it's just something to think about. But the Amish are a very, very good example of living in the world, but not of the world. So there, that will explain a lot. Why do they still wear, everybody wears the same thing? Well, then there's no pride. There's no competing for, um, you know, everybody pay attention to me. Look at my name brand clothes that I'm wearing. There's none of that going on. They're not prideful. Everybody is pretty much the same. Yes, they have different personalities and different interests and different gifts, but as far as trying to compete with their possessions or with their clothes and how they look, you're not going to find that.